this video number 97 on your Firearms Defense Channel. Uh, Happy New Year and New Year's greetings from the People's Republic of California here. This uh, is going to be a report on my uh, four-day handgun course that I took at Frontside uh, December 16th, 17th, 18th, and 19th. And uh, anyway, first thing is I want to uh, give credit to the uh, range master and the instructors who gave this uh, four-day course. Uh, they were all fantastic and it was, all, it was just a great experience and uh, I really appreciated it a lot. Uh, now uh, a couple of things here to note at front sight. Uh, let's see. Uh, when you arrive they give you some of these 10% uh, off at a couple of dining places here. Uh, coupons. Uh, these are some of the coupons they give you. They're laying on the table here. Uh, I stay at the Pahrump, uh, Best Western Pahrump Station. There's three hotels in town. I found that's a, that seems to be the best one that works for me. I've stayed at that one. Beaches Cafe in Las Vegas delivers uh, lunches to front site every day that you're there. So if you're there for two day or four day handgun, it's worth buying a lunch from them. They're $12.95. They get delivered. They're there for you for lunchtime and you don't have any hassle with lunch. Uh, there's an email course questionnaire that Dr. Piazza gives you at the end of the course. Now, uh, I understand you uh, as you send these in and fill them out. Uh, Dr. Piazza reads every one of them and does evaluate them. So uh, that's uh, that's that part of the uh, experience. They've got something new there called the Ammo Bunker, which is now open. Now. Uh, the front side people there tell us the ammo bunker sells ammunition cheaper than they can for some reason. I'll give you a close up look at this so you can see what it is. They're open every day that front side is open there and uh, they're a trailer out by one of the by range too and they sell ammunition so they're worth a uh, look. And uh, let's see if I have uh, what else I have here. Okay, they give you a copy of the dry practice rules. You sign these rules and give one to front sight and take one home. I won't go through those because they're quite long. In fact, they've got a book about uh, dry practice. If you uh, want to do extensive dry practice, it's worth it buying the book. Uh, here's the uh, complete four-day course itinerary. I'll uh, read through this right quick and zip through this. At days one and two, uh, sign in and weapons inspection, uh, classroom lecture, welcome, signing of liability, release, dry practice, release, range activities, lunch, classroom DVD presentation, the front side story, chapter one, your legacy, classroom lecture for new or concealed carry students, code of mental awareness and combat mindset, range activities, classroom lecture for new or concealed carry students, moral and ethical decisions associated with the use of deadly force, day two range activities, lunch, classroom lecture for new or concealed carry students, problems two and three, criminal and civil liability. These are the issues I alluded to in video number 96. Range activities, classroom lecture for new or concealed carry students, tactical movement, Day three, range activities and tactical exercises, lunch, the supplemental lecture, how to select a defensive handgun, tactical shotgun, range activities and tactical exercises. Uh, day four, range activities, lunch, classroom discussion, opportunity to join the front site community. I guess eventually we're going to have uh, homes uh, and uh, timeshares over there range activities and skills test. The skills test concludes day four. Then Tuesday they have extra for the concealed carry uh, students. Uh, sign in and weapons inspection, classroom lecture, range activity, shooting the Nevada qualification course, classroom lecture, state statutes, classroom activities, uh, white tent applications, fingerprint cards, and Nevada written test lunch, classroom activities, fingerprinting and signing applications, optional range activities. Day one lasts from uh, 
6.30 and ends at 6. Day 2 lasts from 8 a.m. until 6 p.m. Day 3 lasts from 8 a.m. till 5 p.m. And Day 4 lasts from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. And uh, Tuesday the concealed carry course lasts from 7.30 until 4.30. So as you can see they're quite long days and you will uh, stay busy for the four days. Now, as to how I shot the course, now, uh, this requires a little explanation. First thing is, I'll show you the, uh, I'll show you the target I shot for the skills test here. Now, there's three sections of shooting for the uh, skills test. And I scored, I was down three on the first one, which are shots to center to the uh, thoracic cavity. I was down three for the second one, which is a combined uh, failure to stop drill, two shots to the thoracic cavity, one to the ocular cranial cavity. The third uh, set of shooting uh, drills is just all head shots, and I was down zero for that. I nailed all of them. The, uh, the first one I shot the thoracic cavity shots, I shanked one right here which as you can see is below the black line. So that's a down three for the thoracic cavity shots. Up here for the uh, combined uh, head shots uh, failure to stop drill, I shanked one here right above the black line. So that was my minus three for that. The final series of head shots that I did, I put them all I think there was seven or so of them. I think I put them all right here in this area. And the instructor walked by and just looked at them for a minute and just signed it off zero. I mean, I didn't miss any of those. So I shot. So my shooting for the skills test was well enough to probably make distinguished graduate. Now, in fact, I didn't even make graduate. The reason for that being, they, it's also a time test too. You have to shoot its speed and accuracy. Now my accuracy was fine, but you could have timed everything I did with a sundial. That's how slow I was. And they didn't need the state-of-the-art electronic gizmos. They used to time everything. For me, they could have had a sundial. And uh, I'll show you one more final shooting test I did. Then I'll explain all this to you. Now this is a uh, this is what's called a hostage rescue shot that they have you do. You're, uh, the white person is a hostage here. These two dark figures are, uh, are hostage takers. And what you do is shoot at them as they peer out from behind the hostage. Now, as you can see, I nailed all three of these shots. And I pretty much nailed all three of these, too. Now, this was one of four sisters that I have, Brenda. I uh, put her name up there for that. Not that I, not that I don't love Brenda any less than the rest of my sisters, but I needed a name for this, so I put her name up there. So anyway, I shot that pretty well. Now, now here's why I performed this test relatively slowly. Now, first thing I want you to note. There's another thing here too I learned at the uh, front site for this. Now when you do your chamber check and mag check, they want you, I don't know if I've covered this on my previous videos or not, but they want you to keep your trigger finger outside of the four fingers that grasp the slide. The reason is the range master needs to see that your trigger finger is in fact off the trigger, so he wants it outside. Then you grasp the slide, pull it back, check the chamber, and when you release the slide, you pull it forward so that it seats. In other words, you pull it forward like that and make sure it's seated. Because if you don't pull it forward, especially with the Glock, sometimes it won't go all the way forward and you'll have a malfunction, especially if it needs oil. This weapon is in pretty good shape. It doesn't need oil or anything. Now, I'm going to do a final chamber check and magazine check and make sure that I'm perfectly safe. I don't want to set a bad example for anybody in any of my videos. Both of these weapons are in fact empty. Now this is the reason that I was so slow shooting on my skills test. I use 
this weapon for the four day course. It's my SIG P220, which I made a video about sometime earlier. Now, the only problem with this weapon is the first trigger press always has to be double action, and it takes some getting used to a double action trigger presses versus a single action trigger press on the Glock. So, especially the headshots, uh, they were much more difficult than a single action press would be. Now, so when you're shooting on the line, also before you put your weapon back in the holster, you always have to press the hammer release and lower the hammer, and then you put it back in your holster. The result of that is your first trigger press always has to be double action. And that works like this, especially for the head shots. As you can see, it's a lot more difficult. And in fact, what I found myself doing a lot of, I did what's called staging the trigger. In other words, it wasn't one smooth press like that. It was real, real slow, and a lot slower than it needed to be. So that's why my skills test was a lot slower than it would have been otherwise. Now, I'll show you the difference here. This is the uh, Glock trigger presses I've covered on my previous videos. Now, you can see the Glock trigger press. It has a trigger release there. And you take the slack out of it like that. There's that much slack in it. You just build up pressure and it releases. It's much, much easier than the uh, SIG. I'll do that one more time. So, so that's why all my range activities could have been timed with a sundial. And uh, when I go back over for four-day handgun again, I'll probably uh, take my nine millimeter and I'll probably do a whole lot better because that's my uh, that's my range weapon of choice. So anyway, this is uh, your firearms defense channel video number ninety-seven. I'm going to sign off now. Uh, Happy New Year to all my. Uh, subscribers and I'll see you in the other videos I make next year.